what is going on guys and welcome back to the channel so we're going to be doing something a little bit different than what we are usually up to with the hellcat and the gto but it still fits right along with the channel as you can see right here behind me we've got a little three-wheeled bicycle thing and a power washer so of course we're going to try to put these things together and see if we can get something that runs and drives that's what we're going to be diving into today if you guys aren't already please think about subscribing and ringing that bell that way you get notified anytime we put out a video with the gto the duramax or the hellcat Let's get through the intro and get right to work. some fresh gas in here this thing hasn't ran in a long time so we're gonna go ahead and see what happens we've got the gas on and the choke is on got the idle start somewhere in the middle and see what happens here it is a Honda so it should run oh now we've got the choke on sorry guys oh look at that Well, it runs great, guys, so let's go ahead and take the pump off this thing and see what we're going to have to do to convert it over. The plan for now is we're going to try to get the motor uh, back in here somewhere and then we're going to build like a little frame to come up so that we can put the pillow block bearings up in here above the axle almost lined up with it and then we will put our big sprocket here getting ran from the centrifugal clutch and then have a sprocket down there that matches the sprocket up here on the jack shaft so try to keep that about one to one so that all of our gear reduction is done from the motor to the first sprocket so that gear changes are easy if we want to play around with that in the future but while we're still waiting for parts i think what we're going to do is start tearing into this uh, power washer frame here i want to try to use this plate that the motor was originally sitting on as our engine plate and then we'll just reinforce it as we have to so i'm just going to go ahead and start cutting some welds and try to get this whole plate off of here and then we will be able to take some measurements and start figuring out where we want to place it on the bike. So let's go ahead and get some tools out and start cutting this thing up. All right, guys, so we are still waiting on some parts to come in. Some have showed up, but you can see right there, we've got some in the box of parts, but we are still waiting on some uh, important pieces before we can start fully assembling this thing. But since I've been waiting, I've been working on the engine plate. As you guys seen, we got it off that power washer frame and I've got it right here in front of me. And I think I have decided that the way we're gonna use it is basically gonna be something like that right there. So the uh, edges here will be facing up. We will clean this thing all up and paint it before we're done. But as you can see, I had to notch it right there for some clearancing, which I will bring it over to the welding table and show you guys why real quick. All right guys, so as you can see, we've got the engine here on our welding table and we've got the engine plate below it. You can see I taped this off, it's easier to see, but I had to cut right here and right here and notch this out so that the engine would sit nice and flush on that engine plate. Um, as you guys might remember from the power washer, the plate was actually the opposite direction, so it sat on top, it didn't have to worry about those lips but I wanted to flip the plate around so that we could use the existing holes and the oil drain spot and everything and just slide that engine back a little bit to give us a little bit more room with the sprockets and chains and the clutch and everything. So that worked out really well. We got that all notched. Now we're still waiting on parts, but I think we're gonna work on the frame a little bit, get it cleaned up, get ready to weld this plate on it. And I'm also gonna go and try to scavenge a throttle off of one of our scrap mopeds out in the back. So I'm gonna go see if I can get that throttle cable off and see if I can steal the twist throttle from it so let's see what we can do there and start getting this engine plate mocked up
All right, guys, so we got this motor plate kind of where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and get set up, and we're going to tack this thing on. All right, so the last thing you guys seen, we were working on mounting the engine plate on the trike here, and I got it tacked up, and we haven't really worked on it much since the other day, waiting for parts and whatnot, but I did go ahead and use some scrap 7 8 pipe we had laying around, and I used a hole saw to notch that so it will fit the pipe on the bike here. And what we're gonna do with that, I made two of these identical, and we're gonna mount them down under here, and they're gonna go up and support the bottom of this engine plate, so that this thing isn't just, uh, the weight of the engine isn't just hanging back here with all that leverage on this little pipe. So we're gonna use two of those to support this plate, but we also got a bunch of parts in from uh, numerous places. I'm gonna give you guys a quick look at what all we have so far. Still waiting on a couple other little things that I will show you when they come in. Everything that we have here, if I bought it, I will link it in the description below. Some of the things I did have laying around, so let's go ahead and take a look. All right guys, so we'll start with the most important things right here, which is the one inch keyed axle shaft that we picked up. There's a part number on it right there, but like I said, I will link it in the description below. This stuff here we got from BMI Carts online, and we also picked up two of these one inch ID pillow blocks. They have a nice grease fitting and two set screws. So we've got two of those here, part number for that as well. They seem like pretty good quality. The axle shaft I got at 24 inches long because we have a bandsaw, we will cut it down to the length we need. I wanted to have more instead of uh, being a little bit short. Then over here, we've got some of the drive pieces that we need. We've got handlebars off of a Grom that I had. We're gonna try to make those work because I don't like the handlebars on the bike. Then we've got a throttle that we stole off of an old scrap moped we have in the back. I'm gonna try to adapt this to working for the throttle on the Honda engine that we're gonna be using on this thing so that we have a nice twist throttle. If not, Amazon has some cheap thumb throttles, but I think we're gonna be able to make that work. Then we've got a 10 tooth centrifugal clutch right here. Again, another Amazon buy. We went with a 10 tooth so that we could run a 420 style chain, which we have right here. Also have another chain coming in to run from the jack shaft down to the actual, actual axle on the bike itself. Then we've got two of these 14 tooth one inch ID sprockets. We're gonna be using one of these down on the bike axle and then one on the jack shaft. So it's basically a one to one right there because we're gonna be doing all of our gear reduction with this big sprocket here. This is a 60 tooth. This one is also a one inch ID. So we're gonna use this one coming off of the centrifugal clutch. It's gonna to go to that. That will be our gear reduction. And then the jack shaft will be spinning this which will spin another one identical to this down on the axle of the bike. So we should be pretty good there. Wanted to do it that way so it's easy to do gear changes if we ever need to. And then you can see I've got some collars here. So what I was doing is because this bike has a very odd axle size, it's 15 millimeter. So you can't get a good sprocket in a 420 chain for a 15 millimeter. So I got a little collar here that is 15 millimeter ID and it's 0.98 inches outside diameter. So what we're gonna do is this will fit snugly on the axle of the bike and it will also fit inside any of these sprockets, these one inch sprockets. So we can just go ahead, push that in like so and weld it to this. And if we have to, we can drill through and make our own set screw, but I'm gonna try to figure something out um, a little bit easier than doing that. So as of right now, that's what we've got for parts. So we can keep working on this thing. We've got to start getting ready to mount this engine up and get everything aligned and get everything in place so that we can try this thing out. So I think the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tack these little supports that I made up underneath this plate so that it's got some more support. And then we might flip the bike over, finish weld everything, and then we can start making brackets to do our um, jack shaft. All right guys, so here's a first look at it with the motor sitting on it. I went ahead and got those supports welded as you guys seen. Uh, it looks like bubble gum welds a lot of them. This 
This and the supports I made weld together great. It's just this tubing is junk. I tried cleaning the paint off it, but it still welds horribly. So if you guys are going to do something like this, just be prepared for that. But we got it stuck on there. It seems to be pretty decent for what it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw the clutch on this thing and start taking some rough measurements. I might start cutting that axle down so it's easier to work with. But uh, I want to get a couple things just set on there so we can start figuring out some placement of some things. Alright guys, so here's the sprocket. Sorry I forgot to turn on the camera, but we've got it welded up. Now I just got to get this bolt out of it. I went ahead and took the axle and wheels off the bike so that we can start putting this sprocket on, the brakes, the pedal sprocket, then get the wheels back on and get all that figured out so that we can start working on our jack shaft and the frame for that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this ready to go on and then we can start reassembling that section. All right, so like I had mentioned, now we are ready to start building the frame for the jack shaft. I wanna keep it as straight with the axle as possible so that when we run the chain down to it, we're good. And then we've also gotta have it lined up so that that chain can run to the big sprocket. Now, what my plan is here, I already notched this piece of square tube and we're gonna be putting that something like that. And I wanna try to get this on about a 45 degree angle so that we can use the leftover off of this and make a standoff piece here, put a 45 degree cut on it, and it'll intersect with it running here so we can weld those together, make it a little bit stronger. Um, I would like to have it braced a little differently, but I think for what we're working with here, power-wise and everything else, I think this should be plenty strong. So that's what we're gonna work at now. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece at about 11 and a half inches and then we'll cut a standoff and we're going to start right around six inch and we'll put a 45 on it and we can work it from there either cut it down a little bit more or belt sander All right guys, so I threw the engine back on there and we've got our little supports tacked in place for the jack shaft, which we have right here. I don't have the sprocket on it right this second, but as you can see, it's gonna go on there, something like that, and then the sprockets will be in the middle. And I think what I'm gonna do is I might try using the nut certs or the rib nuts so that we don't have to drill through the tubing with a nut and bolt, and we'll see if the nut certs hold it or not. Not sure if they will, but it's worth a shot. We can always drill through it later and put a nut and bolt. So we gotta get that to pretty much 90 degrees because that's about what that blower sprocket is. And then we can start getting the good bolts in this thing and getting this thing finished up. All right, so as you guys can see, I just drilled a pilot hole. We're gonna go ahead and drill and tap that for a set screw. For whatever reason, this sprocket doesn't have one, so we're trying to make one here. Wasn't as centered as I would have liked, but we should be able to make that work. All right guys, so I went ahead and started putting this thing together for mock-up right now. We've got a chain on it. I did tighten down the engine and I have our jack shaft. Just these top bolts are in it right now because I wanna make sure everything's gonna work before we go too crazy, make sure I don't have to make anything else on there. We are gonna have to get a tensioner for like right here. So let's go ahead and see if we can't get this thing to fire up. fires right up. Awesome. 
So guys, well it seems like it's working, just needs a little bit of fine tuning with the chain and maybe a tensioner. So let's go ahead and shut this thing down for now. I'm just going to go ahead and slap that chain on. And then uh, I think we should be about ready to start this thing up and see if it'll move. So let's get that chain on. Alright guys, so now that we have the chains on here, I'm going to go ahead and start making some tensioners for them. I've got some little bearings that I bought. They're uh, chain tensioners and they have bearings inside them. And I'm going to go ahead and make some mounts for them out of some flat stock I've got laying around. We'll drill it out and uh, make some slots for it so that we can tension it and then tighten the bolt and hold it tight. So we're going to put ours on the top because the way this spins, it's pulling on the bottom. So that should naturally straighten itself out and then this can take up the slack right here. So let's go ahead and throw some metal in the bandsaw and get it cut up. All right, guys, so we're going to take a quick break from working on the chain tensioners because I want to start working on figuring out a throttle for this thing. So as you can see here, we've got a twist throttle off an old moped that we had sitting out in the back. It's just a regular style twist throttle that moves this cable here at the end. So to be able to use that, we're going to have to mess around with this a little bit and see what we can figure out. So first thing, let's go ahead and get this intake out of our way so we can see what's going on in here. That can actually stay for the time being. Now you can see there's a 10 millimeter nut right there. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a ratchet. First things first, see if we can get that thing to freely move. So let's back off on that a little bit. All right, so now that works kind of how we need it to, just springs back. So now let's go ahead and take a closer look and see what we can do to mount this cable and get it ran so that we can use the twist throttle. I've got it sitting between the retainer right here. We took it off of this side where it was from the factory and just put it over here and used it to hold this. We've got the nuts that would normally uh, mount it into the bracket on the moped on either side so that it holds it nice and firm there and keeps it nice and flat. We took the ball end here and just put it into a hole that was already in this bracket and I'm using a little zip tie just to hold it in there for now so that it will uh, keep it from bouncing out or popping out. Cut that. Right into there. Now let's go try our throttle and see if it holds. All right guys, so I think that's gonna work for now. So let's go ahead and throw the filter and everything back on it and get back to working on the tensioners. All right guys, so as you've seen, we made that little tensioner setup that we've got here. Now I've just gotta clean it up and clean up this bottom plate and get it ready to be welded on. I think it's gonna go something similar to that, what you see right there. And then we can just loosen up the nut and push down on this tensioner, tighten it up, and it should hold tension on that chain. So I think we've got that one figured out. Now for the drive to the axle down in here. And I think I'm gonna use this cheap little one I found online, it was like 10, 15 bucks or something. I'll put all the links to everything in the description. But I think what I'm gonna try to do is make a plate similar to this back here. It'll obviously be shorter than this piece right there. And uh, this section will be narrower. But I'm gonna make something like that so that we can come in here Put that on here like so and then bolt it to that plate in the back and it should keep that spring tension on it. So that's what we're going to try for. So let's go ahead and throw this thing in the bandsaw, cut some pieces down to what we need and start getting everything ready to be welded on here. Alright guys, let's go ahead and give this thing a first try.
All right, guys, so as you've seen, we took the trike for its first ride just around the driveway. I did try to take it down the street a little bit, but we're having a few issues that I'm not really happy with. It doesn't like to take off on its own. We are using the small centrifugal clutch uh, drive on it, and I just don't think it's gonna work out that great for this bike. It doesn't really wanna take off. If you pedal with it a little bit, it'll start taking off fine on its own, but then when you get it going and you try to go wide open throttle, the whole bike starts to like jerk, and I'm just afraid it's gonna start breaking everything. So I came up with a different idea. Instead of running the centrifugal clutch, we're gonna go ahead and give a torque converter style setup a try. So I went ahead and ordered a Nusun off of Amazon, one of the cheapest ones you can find. I tried to find some reviews, couldn't find too much on it, but the few that I did find, it sounds like it should work all right. We're gonna give it a try. The biggest thing I'm worried about with it is getting it mounted up and making what we have already made work with it because we do have the engine and everything pretty close to our big sprocket to gear reduction it down. So I think what we're gonna have to do is try to mount it straight up and down. Might have to move the tank over a little bit, make some mounts for it, and modify a few other things, but I'm hoping that we should be able to make it work. So let's go ahead, get this thing out of the box real quick, and I'll throw it together and use the backing plate to just try to size up a few things and see what all we're gonna have to change. So let's get this thing open and start slapping it on. All right guys, so after test fitting this thing, sadly I'm gonna have to cut quite a bit of these fins out. I think the thing's gonna be plenty strong for what we're doing, but sadly I'm gonna have to cut them all the way back to here. I'm gonna try doing it on a rough angle, like right about like that, and leave these few that I can, and just cut it off. We're gonna try it with a few things. I'm gonna try a flap wheel and a carbide bit on my die grinder. And we'll see which works better and see which one I can get it done fastest with. And then once we get this thing trimmed up, I'll show you guys and we'll head back over to the bike and get this thing mounted. So I had to clearance the case a little bit more here, this backing plate, and I think it's finally about good for what we're gonna need. I can do some fine touches later if we have to, but now I think we're gonna start focusing on getting this engine shifted over. I'd like to have it so that this sprocket could at least be about here, uh, maybe even a little bit further that way, but somewhere right in this area would be nice. So I'm gonna see what we can do about getting that engine over and we'll go from there. So let's get the engine pulled off and start making a template so we can drill some new holes. So we got the engine bolted down here, we got the plate on there and tight. The sprockets are lined up pretty good for now. I'm not gonna put a tensioner on it just because I wanna try this thing and see if the clutch is gonna work how we want it to. We did add a fuel filter. We got pretty much everything back together. Like I said, engine is tight. We're gonna go ahead and throw the torque converter on there and see if we run into any other issues. All right guys, so we now have front shock and we've got a drive shaft sensor, rear shock sensor. So now we can use the traction control. So we're going to throw a little bit of weight in the back of the car because I don't imagine this track's going to be super sticky. All right guys, we got this thing fully assembled. It doesn't seem to like to roll very well, so I don't think the pedal system is going to be 
uh, a viable option. But we're gonna go ahead and bring this thing outside and fire it up. Not sure if maybe it'll wear in a little bit and then be uh, loose enough for it to free roll with the pedals. But for now, I'm just gonna concentrate on trying to get it driving under its own power. So let's head on outside. It is way better with the torque converter than with the centrifugal butt. It'll actually take off on its own. All right guys, so as you can see, we got this thing outside and we're gonna go ahead and fire it up, take it for a ride. I'll throw a camera on my head just so I can take you guys for a quick ride. But we did end up finding this muffler off another project we picked up and we're not gonna use it on that. So I threw it on here. Actually sounds pretty good on this little motor. So we're gonna run with that for now. But let's get this thing fired up and go take it for a little ride. Sounds way better with that muffler on it. All right, let's take it for a ride. Alright guys, so as you can see, we just got back from taking this thing for a ride, and it actually rips around pretty good. It picks up surprisingly well, especially with that torque converter. It's working perfectly, but there are still some downfalls to using this setup. Uh, with the factory rear trike setup, it's just not very rigid, and it tends to flex a lot, and it's still got that 15 millimeter super weak axle that could break at any second so instead of carrying on too much further with this setup i think we're just going to change directions and come back to this project in the near future and we will redesign our rear setup 
As you can see, I've already started on making a solid square tube frame for it to stiffen that thing right up. And we will use a way beefier axle and some better tires and convert the engine and torque converter and everything over to that and make it so it's modular and can bolt up there and improve this thing quite a bit and make it pretty much bulletproof. So make sure to stay tuned for that. We will revisit that here in the near future. As always, guys, I appreciate you for checking out the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell. And we will catch you on the next one.